Well, I hope by this stage of Connect Season 3 that you're full of faith, you're full of hope, you're full of love, you're full of the Holy Spirit. And I hope that being having your tanks so full, uh, you just want more. And I hope that this uh, study will encourage you. And I hope that it will fill you with encouragement and give you a desire uh, to be an encourager. Tonight we're looking at Barnabas. Barnabas is the great encourager in the New Testament. In fact, his very name means son of encouragement. His real name, the name that he was given as a child, was Joseph. But right at the end of Acts chapter 4, um, we're told that he was given the name Barnabas, son of encouragement. It was kind of a nickname. It would be like saying, uh, here comes encourager. Uh, so Barnabas had obviously built up this reputation as being a very encouraging person. I, I don't know about you, but I would love people to think of me in that way. That when they see me, they would think, oh, here comes encourager. Here comes uh, the guy that's always encouraging people. Barnabas was a great encourager. He was also a very generous person. Um, we're told that he, he sold some of his property and he, he gave the money to, to the church in Jerusalem. So there was something about his life. There was a graciousness about him and there was a concern for others. There was a concern uh, to build others up. As we travel through uh, the early chapters of the Acts of the Apostles, uh, we, we don't see or hear much of Barnabas until we get to Acts chapter 9. And in Acts chapter 9, we read about how Paul, or Saul as he was then, is converted. And uh, the church is very reticent to ad admit Saul into their circle because obviously they knew his reputation. He had been someone who had spent a, a long time persecuting the church. He was out after the Christians. He wanted to uh, lock them up. He wanted to extinguish uh, the, the flame that, that God had lit uh, on the day of Pentecost. He wanted to wipe the church out. But now he was claiming to have met Jesus and to have been converted. And uh, many people were really just a little concerned as to whether his conversion was for real or not. But Barnabas decided that he would bring Saul in. He decided to stretch out the hand of friendship to Saul and bring him into uh, the group at Jerusalem. I think that's a mark of an encourager. That's a mark of someone whose encouragement tank is full. They reach out beyond their own group to others. They bring in people who are different. They bring in people who are on the fringe. They even bring in people uh, who sometimes might arouse the suspicion of others for whatever reason. And Barnabas certainly did that with Saul. And that was something that really changed the course of the history of the church and in fact changed the course of world history as well. That wasn't the, the last time that Barnabas did that because we find uh, over in Acts chapter 15 uh, that Barnabas wants to bring John Mark uh, on a missionary journey that he and, and Paul are setting out on and that they have planned together and Paul doesn't want to bring John Mark because uh, on another occasion, John Mark had deserted them. Um, he hadn't been up to, the, up to the job. He hadn't been fit for the mission. And, and Paul and Barnabas have this, this big debate and eventually a major disagreement um, that results in them going their separate ways. And the reason is because Barnabas, once again, wants to stick up for someone, wants to bring someone into the circle. Uh, but Paul is not too keen on having John Mark come along with them. And so they go their separate ways. But this is characteristic of Barnabas and it's characteristic of someone who's an encourager. They want to include others who are outside of the group, who are maybe not well known to the group. I don't know if there are people uh, that spring to your mind as I'm saying these words who are not part of your group, but you think they could be part of your connect group or you think they could be part of the church or they could come along to bring a friend Sunday. Uh, so often it, it's up to people like us, people who have a spirit of encouragement, people who are full of encouragement, to go and invite those people, to bring them in, to make them part of what's happening and to invite them into what God is doing. And then a couple of chapters later, we find that Barnabas uh, receives a new mission from the church at Jerusalem. 
You might remember in Acts chapter 10 uh, that uh, Simon Peter went to the house of Cornelius and he preached and the, the Holy Spirit fell on these Gentile believers and, and it was an indication um, that God was moving out of a strictly uh, Jewish world, a strictly Jewish setting and he was reaching out beyond uh, some of the boundaries that seemed to have become imposed on the church and he was reaching out to Gentile people. And of course, one of the areas where this is uh, happening most effectively is in the city of Antioch. And truth be told, the apostles in Jerusalem weren't really sure what to make of it. And whether they weren't uh, convinced of their own ability to, to handle the situation or pastor the situation, or, or whether they just felt that they were too busy in Jerusalem, they decided to send Barnabas to go to Antioch and find out what was going on. And in Acts chapter 11, I think it's verses uh, 22 to 24, we, we find that Barnabas uh, goes to Antioch and there's a little phrase that says that when he saw what the grace of God had done, that he encouraged the people uh, to remain faithful to the Lord. So Barnabas here is able to see something in a situation that's maybe to other eyes a little bit ambiguous. Uh, he doesn't see the problems, and I'm sure there were problems at Antioch. Um, he, he sees beyond the, what had become a, a, a restrictive theology that perhaps had grown up in Jerusalem. And he sees beyond all of that. He sees, sees beyond his own um, cultural preferences and perhaps beyond the cultural prejudices of some people. He sees beyond that and he sees what the grace of God is doing. I think that's one of the marks of an encourager. They're able to see what God is doing. You know, sometimes um, we can go into situations or we can look at situations and we can see what God's not doing. Um, sometimes our glass is more half empty than half full. Uh, sometimes we can look at a situation and say, well, this isn't happening and that's not happening and um, something else isn't happening and this should be happening and that should be happening or this shouldn't be happening. But actually Barnabas went to Antioch and what he focused on was what God was doing. And I think uh, someone whose encouragement tank is full is focusing on what God's doing. They're not too concerned about what he's not doing or what they think he should be doing. Their main focus is what God's doing and they encourage people to remain faithful to the Lord and to keep doing what they're doing. So if, if you want to be a, a Barnabas, if you want to be an encourager, um, if you want to have a full encouragement tank, look, at, look for what God's doing and encourage what God's doing and encourage people in what God's doing. So encouragers are keen to focus on what God's doing. Then encouragers also have an ability to build themselves up and keep themselves encouraged. We're not sure how Barnabas did this. Uh, we're not told uh, what his spiritual disciplines were, but um, no doubt he was a man of prayer. No doubt he was a man uh, who was full of the Holy Spirit and made room for the Holy Spirit in his life. And the way that he led the church at Antioch would indicate that. He, he brings uh, Paul in, Paul uh, into the church at Antioch. He brings him onto the team there. Um, in Acts 13, when you see the makeup of the team, um, it's ethnically mixed, it's socially mixed. Uh, and, and of course, he welcomes Agabus the prophet um, who prophesies about a famine. So there's a, there's a real desire, as I understand it, and the way I would interpret it, that, that uh, Barnabas has to make room for the Holy Spirit and to hear what the Holy Spirit's doing and wants to do in the church at Antioch. So no doubt Barnabas is a man who's sensitive to the Spirit and, and wants to, to make a way for the Holy Spirit um, in his own life and in what's happening in the church that he is part of. Barnabas mightn't uh, reveal to us his, the secret of his uh, encouraging heart and, and the Bible doesn't um, give us a lot of insight into that. But there are other scriptures that, that indicate how we can stay encouraged. One's from the Old Testament um, and it's from 1 Samuel 30 verse 6. The King James Version says that David 
encouraged himself in the Lord. The NIV puts it that David strengthened himself in the Lord. I love the King James translation on this. It says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord and remind ourselves of God's goodness, of God's power, of God's love for us. And when we begin to dwell on those things, we become encouraged ourselves. And then, of course, the scriptures encourage us. Romans 15 verse 5 says that the scriptures are given to us to encourage us. And when you read uh, the scriptures and, and, and you seek to hear the voice of God and you remind yourself of what God has done throughout history, it's something that encourages you. And the Holy Spirit takes the words of the Bible and he applies them to our hearts and, and, and he uses them to, to encourage us and to build us up. And then uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 um, says that we're to uh, encourage one another, uh, that we're to uh, uh, have that kind of interaction with each other. I, I would encourage you uh, to encourage one another in your groups. Just speak words of encouragement. Take time and, and take thought and even pray about how you can encourage other people, how you can speak uh, words of life to them, words that will lift people and work words and that will cause them uh, to want to go on. And of course, in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, we're told that, that a prophecy is given uh, to build up the church, to encourage the church. So to be in an, an environment, in an atmosphere um, where the prophetic is flowing, where words of encouragement are flowing, that builds us up as well. That's why it's so important that we get together, whether it's on a Sunday or in our connect groups, we're in an environment where we're, we're built up uh, by the Holy Spirit and built up by the Holy Spirit through each other because that's the way he works. He works through your words and my words uh, to, uh, to build up the body of Christ. So I, I hope and pray uh, that as you uh, uh, go through this study and you see what the scriptures have to say and you read about this amazing man called Barnabas, and that it will create in you a hunger to be an encourager, a desire to be an encourager. And I pray also that it will fill your encouragement tank to overflowing.